Welcome back to the Atari Recharge podcast. Uh, this is Jason Polanski, joined as always by Adam Nickerson at the Adam Vision. Hey, Adam. That's me. And joined this time, this week, by Tadas Migauskas. Hello. Got it right. Yep. I don't know Perfect. if you want to be identified as by any sort of social media handle, uh, anywhere people can follow you. No, not really. <laughs> no. <laughs> Tadas, Tadas is the develop is the producer on the development side of the recharge series at Sneaky Box. Yep. So he's joining us. It's kind of late his time, um, but thank you for joining us. You should have a good uh, should have a good podcast here. Have some fun, and uh, you know you can follow me at Jays of Doom on Twitter. Uh, hashtag Atari Recharge Podcast. No one's used it yet. No pressure, but start, but, but maybe start using it. I think that'd be great. Ask some questions, give us feedback, do what you do. And, uh, and for those who have been listening and enjoying, we appreciate all your positive feedback. Uh, people seem to be liking it and even more so people seem to be liking centipede recharge, which is now out on the Atari VCS on PC via steam and Epic Nintendo switch, Xbox one series X series S PS4 PS5. That's it. Where else do you want it? What else do you want from us? It, not it only is. that. It's wild you said that because I, <laughs> until someone was asking me about it, I was like, wait a minute, is it on Xbox One? I looked it up <laughs> yesterday and I was like, it is on Xbox One. What the <laughs> oh, hell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, that's awesome. Yeah, it's on it everything. If you, if you have a box from the last nine years, no. When did the series, when did the one come out? It doesn't matter. If you have any sort of modern console, you can okay. play the game. Right now, you can get it. And not only that, you but we also announced the next three titles in the Recharge series. Oh, That'll yeah. be out before the end of the year. You know, unless there are unforeseen catastrophic events. But so far, we're feeling pretty good about it. So those are going to be Black Widow recharge which is going to come out on october 28th just in time for halloween get your spidey on and then you'll it'll be followed by asteroids recharged and then breakout recharged so you got a good smattering of stuff right now you're shooting bugs you'll be shooting different bugs later this month later in october you'll be shooting asteroids in uh in november and you'll be breaking bricks in december come on Indeed. If that's not if a you quality were to have said way, shooting rocks is that like a drug thing? Is that why you avoid shooting rocks? I'm just curious. Uh, you, honestly, I said it ten seconds ago, and I don't even remember what I said. <laughs> shooting <laughs> break, breaking bricks. Breaking I said bricks. breaking bricks at the end. Yeah. No, I was thinking shooting. But what rocks I said for asteroids. asteroids. I yeah, Wait, I believe I said asteroids. Cut? Do you have to cut me saying shooting rocks now? I don't know. We'll see how it plays out. Does it infuriate you that you have to cut so many things I say? <laughs> it's it's honestly not as much as you would think. Most of it goes into the podcast. And not only that, if you missed it last week, there's a brief pause at the end. And then there's a little bit of an outtake that I put at the end, which was All an right, explanation for one of uh, one of Adam's video. There's this little fun exchange that happened during our commercial break. So if you haven't heard it, go back, listen to the last five seconds, and you're welcome. I listened to the whole podcast except for those last five seconds, and now I need to go back. You need to go back. It was a good exchange. And yeah. you learned that I like banana bread. What's not, you know, we're, we're always learning. We're good. always learning about each other. Love so, banana bread. So really, what you have here is kind of like the overall leads from our respective, uh, from our respective companies, right? You got... You got me, who's been leading the project from Atari. You got Adam, who's leading, leading the project from <laughs> Adam Vision Studios, which is... Mm -hmm. Adam, how many guys you got under you now? Uh, you know, it's still just the none. <laughs> <laughs> so the, right. the, the zero. <laughs> Wonderful. And then, uh, uh, and then we got Tadas, who is... Uh, who basically runs the runs the ship over there on Team uh, team Recharge at Sneaky Box. So yep. it's really... Um, you know, so it's going to be an interesting conversation and I have, and we'll get into a little bit about that, like what, what Tadis does at Sneaky Box will, uh, and, and his role on the recharge series. But I can tell you this as a spoiler, anything that is done is thanks to Tadis. So you could thank him for everything. 
and then not too um, hard. Not too hard. We don't want we much. don't want his head yeah. we don't want oh. his head to get too big. Yeah. So normally I'd start the podcast. We'd talk about some uh, some feedback uh, from the prior week's episode. Look, it's all positive. Uh, we got some really we got some more five star reviews on iTunes. Keep them coming. They really do help, and we appreciate it. Some of them are just very long. Everybody really liked the discussion that we talked about with, um, with that we had with Vitus last week, talking about game design getting in the industry, that kind of stuff. So we'll get into that later with Tadis as well. I think that's uh, that's a worthy conversation to have. But instead of talking about feedback from last week's episode, I think what, we're, what we should do instead today, since we came out yesterday, review embargoes lifted on Tuesday. I got open critic up and I got meta critic up. We're just going to run through some top line feedback from, uh, from our reviews. You love How to see sound? it. Yeah, yeah, you do. Okay, so... Now, do you want me to go from like the bottom up or the top down? You guys have a preference here? Uh, you start at the bottom, then we're here. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. So we are at a 78 on Metacritic and a 73 on OpenCritic from way too many games with a 6.5 out of 10. Because look, sometimes you just got to look at this stuff, right? You learn, you get better. And sometimes you get these reviews. The way I call it, tough, tough but fair. Tough but fair, right? So so Leonardo Ferrario from Too Many Games says, Centipede Recharged is, well, for better or worse, just more Centipede. This is a reboot remake that absolutely does not try to reinvent the wheel. Its vector light visuals fit perfectly with the source material. Its controls are serviceable. And for the most part, it delivers in what it wants to offer. Be, be a less cumbersome way to play a classic arcade game on a modern system. A less Do cumbersome. you guys see anything negative there? I don't. No. Because that sounds like what we were trying to do. <laughs> just, just a bit less cumbersome than the usual. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's interesting about this is you kind of turn the, quote unquote, the negative into a positive, right? Because yeah. the actual, his reason... Um, his reasoning for saying that it's a, you know, it's a less cumbersome modern take. If you go back and play the classic, like the whole, the whole point of the series is to make you feel like you're playing the classic. Yeah. So, but then when you go, but then the other caveat that I always put at the end of it, when we were talking about this is when you go back to play the classic, you, you understand, oh wait, this is totally different. We basically just mess with your mind. You think you remember it. That's the key. Exactly. We're trying to make Mm -hmm. the game the way you think you remember it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I think I think we nailed it. Moving up from the list, moving on to uh, Jordan Rudick from Nintendo World Report. In short bursts, he gives us a 7 out of 10. In short bursts, Recharge plays well enough to earn a spot in my rotation for sure, and I'll gladly pop in from time to time to check out the various leaderboards. The art style does grow a bit stale the more you see it. The additional color palettes or unlockables could certainly be welcome here. It might not have 100 of them, but as far as arcade revivals go, Centipede Recharge definitely has legs. I like the pun. I also understand that I might be the reason why we got a little bit less. Uh, I think I'm pretty sure this, it read like an eight. Let me be clear. This read like an eight. Mm -hmm. On Monday night, I turned on the Switch version. We pushed a patch live. We got a patch approved and it went live on Monday night. And... I jumped in, made sure everything was working fine. There was a there was a bug reported with like a crash that we fixed. So I was testing that out. Yeah. Jump into arcade mode, and I got my highest arcade score yet. And who did I see in the leaderboard? Now at number two, NWR Jordan. NWR Jordan. So yeah, pretty sure up. I knocked him knocked him down a peg, and that might have upset him. So we're just gonna assume that that was the case. All right, just gonna make <laughs> that assumption. Not saying it's true, but it's an assumption. But overall, pretty. Pretty good. Uh, I'm not going to read all the reviews. Let's jump over to Hardcore Gamer. It gave us a four out of five. I'll read two more, this one and one more. While leaderboards are wonky, sorry, the rest of Centipede Recharge feels just about exactly like you'd want the original game to be when dragged into the current year. That sounds aggressive. That was pretty good. And then the last review I'll read is from is uh, the headline from Game Zebo. The budget price point, $9.99. 
that's my little annotation, means this is a very easy recommendation for those looking for a new shooter or even a well-balanced cooperative experience. In our eyes, Centipede Recharged is one of the best retro reboots so far this year. Nice. Bam. But the year is not over yet. The year is not over. That's true. So looks like we'll be looking to top ourselves with the next uh, with the next three releases. It's really uh, it. really cool. So so guys, well done. And um, you know, I've said it privately on a lot of calls, but seriously, well done to the to the team. Really happy with the game. People that are playing it really seem to be enjoying it. Uh, the reviews are positive, and yeah, there, there's there's little more to say than that. You guys want to comment on any of the reception, anything you've heard, any of the any of the reviews before moving on? People seem to really love playing co-op, which I'm really happy to hear. Yeah. Like I, I, I think there was a period where we were not sure about what we were going to do with the multiplayer. And then it, mm-hmm. uh, we kind of settled on the way it is now and decided that was the right way. And it just, you know, it feels good. It's fun to play. Uh, it's, it's not so punishing that it's like uh, you get upset because you can get your other player back in and whatnot. And it's, I don't know. I just, uh, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised uh, how much people are enjoying co-op. Indeed. Like uh, I had a few rounds with my brother uh, in testing rounds. And I think uh, when we started playing, it just, the time flew by so fast. And yeah. I think uh, he helped me a lot with the uh, stuff I needed to check out. And yeah, I guess I'll uh, need to drop him a code uh, eventually too. Yeah. Hop back eventually, on the that's the thing. Yeah, yeah if you too. play it on Steam, yeah, you can uh, you can remote play together. Awesome, that's right? So it yeah. uh, you can play co-op online essentially. Yeah, which is nice. That's great. and it's a good sign. It, it's a great sign too because it's in all of the games are going to have the same feature set. So co-op, that arcade mode, the challenge mode. People really love those challenges, which is great to see as well. Really happy yeah. to see how they uh, respond to those. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I thought it was a really great, uh, really great run of reviews. And so Tadas actually, he, re- he, he played a ton of co-op. He was actually the one who recorded all the footage for the Centipede trailer. Um, and then I took the runs for the next few. And, and if you have the game, more. all of the footage that's in the background is also recorded by yours truly. Wow. You're that's like true. Steven Spielberg. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> the production value of that footage. Oh, my best it's, work. <laughs> it's incredible. It's incredible. So this is the first this is the first podcast that we're recording where we're after the release. So we're able to do all those reviews, which is great. If any more of note come up within the next week, maybe we'll re- read some more next week. Uh, but we also have announced Black Widow, Asteroids, and Breakout. And those are all super exciting, really hyped to get excited for. Um, yeah. Megan, definitely, we, we did a pretty good job of teasing Black Widow. A few of you guessed it. Um, so that, that was pretty cool to see, just like kind of giggling to myself when I see people guessing what are the what are the next three going to be? What are the next three going to be? And now that it's out, out there, um, I, I think you guys are in for a treat. I know, you know, we, we love them all, right? Um, so I, why don't we just take a little bit of time here just to talk about like, what excites you most? You can pick one, all of them, whatever. Uh, we can start, Tadis, we can start with you. What, which of the three games do you want to, you know, highlight anything specifically about that people should get hyped for? Yeah. Uh, coming, oh, man. Coming um, there's so much. There's actually so much stuff that's uh, crazy good in all of these games. Uh, personally, uh, when we were working on Black Widow, the moment when we came up with the deadly web or the spider uh, web that destroys everything. Well, why don't you take a quick sidebar to explain what yeah, that yeah. is. Basically, that's new. This is new. Yeah, this is new, actually. Uh, in, in, in all of the games, we have these uh, pickups that you use to plow down all of the enemies. And uh, in Black Widow, uh, we try to keep it... Uh, as close to the original with the uh, dollar signs that you pick up uh, that gives you score. But there are some instances in some challenges that you don't need the score. You need to be as fast as possible and as efficient as possible. 
but I really liked collecting the dollar signs and I really didn't want to remove them or something. So uh, me and the guys came up with the idea to to have those dollar signs as a like a collectible, which you uh, fill up a, a, a progress bar, basically, which you, uh, when it's full, you can use like a, an, an ultimate ability, your deadly web to destroy like the, a huge part of the uh, of the map, and that that increased the game dy- dynamics so much because you have like these danger areas at the corners of the web where you have uh, enemies spawning in and running towards you, where most likely you'll you'll have the most amount of uh, the dollar signs that you need to pick up. So you're putting yourself in danger to uh, to collect them, as well as because the deadly web is a huge triangle of area of damage uh you need to stay as close to the corner as possible to get like the largest amount of area damage you want but that's also putting you at the highest amount of risk as well so so that really an an interesting dynamic that we introduced to the game and i think uh yeah can't wait people to hear what people think about it so a little bit a little bit more about that that you'll appreciate. So there was a reaction by a YouTube channel called the Atari Creep. I think that's who it was. Oh. And he was doing a trailer reaction to the Black Widow trailer. Yeah. And he actually after the web after the deadly web shot happened, he was like, "Whoa, I got to go back and watch that again." <laughs> so he moved it back a few seconds to watch it again. Nice. Uh, and I knew I had to tell you about that because I believe yeah. you're you're being a little humble here, but Tatis, wasn't that something from your wasn't it your idea to shoot that? Yeah, you could approach that. Out of yeah, his brain. Yeah. Actually, Thought yeah, right out of his brain. So very cool. It really does feel awesome. So Adam, Thought what about you? Give himself enough credit as a designer. Like we were on a long design call yesterday, and like Todd is full of incredible ideas. Oh so, man! Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. But also, I audio, did... audio listeners, you got to jump on YouTube to see him blush. <laughs> Since we were on uh a call so late also didn't did you have to sleep in your building because uh <laughs> the, lar- the, alarm went off. the alarm went off the alarm went off oh and it God. went off twice and it scared wow. the living hell out of me because like the first time i was expecting that something might happen but after the first one i turned off the alarm went back to my desk and started packing my backpack just to go home and then i hear just like beep and I started looking around. What the hell is going on? What's what's this peeping sound? And then, like, as soon as I realized, the alarm went off again, and it's like I went out trembling, basically, in my hands. And it, it was late at night. There's something beeping, and then it started screaming at me. And then the security guy is gonna come any minute now. I need to get the hell out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. You should have just covered your face and ran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not I looking guess, suspicious yeah. at all. Yeah. Jump out the jump out the window. Before no, you man, it's it's the seventh floor. No. Okay, don't don't jump out the window. Whatever you do, don't jump out the window. Yeah, do not. So, Adam, what about what about you? What what's one thing from the next three titles that you want to call out that's particularly cool and interesting that people should get excited about? Okay, well, I'm actually gonna say first off, I just the more we've uh, done on breakout, I'm. I'm I love what we're doing with that. It's very unique breakout, but also Black Widow, man. Black Widow is so cool. I freaking love playing it. Uh, I'm I'm doing the same thing where I was obsessed with Centipede and just like found myself. I'm like, I got to check this thing. And then 40 minutes later, I'm like, what was I doing? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Because like it literally happened on the design call yesterday where yeah. Tatis and I were double checking something in a scene, and then it got to yeah. us just like uh uh uh-huh. No, no, no. Uh-huh. Yeah, he, he, well, he just uh-huh. talking. Why keep playing? Yeah, I was yeah. trying to get a score, and then he was making fun of me for not getting the score. And then I was like, "Oh yeah!" <laughs> and then I'm retrying. I'm like, "Wait, what were we? Were we looking for something?" <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, but also, my favorite song out of all, like all the music's amazing, but my favorite song out of all the games is in Black Widow. Yeah, and I love oh, yeah. it. It is it is infectious. Really, really cool soundtrack. I think she's so it. groovy. I think, I think I think Megan was saying that's her favorite as well. They're all amazing. And by the way, sidebar: you can now get the album, so you can find Megan McDuffie's Bandcamp, and you can get the album there. 
Uh, I believe it's on some streaming services as well. I don't know. She's handling yeah, the distribution. Do it. Um, and we got a question about that coming later. Um, and then for me, I'll, I'm going to cheat and I'm going to mention something about asteroids and two things about it. Because the first time you see the that like the what we have as a railgun in asteroids oh, is yeah. one of the coolest and best feeling effects ever. It's um, basically like it shoots this screen long blast that just covered sweeps the entire screen. And it is awesome. It's got this charge up, this build up. It kind of slows you down. So it just feels powerful. Yeah. And then you're like, this is the coolest. This is the coolest power up you could put in a game. And then you get the explosive shots in asteroids. And then you realize, no way, this is the coolest thing (laughs) that's in the game because it acts like this kind of black hole that just sucks up everything in the radius. And the effect is awesome. Yeah. So I have a gif of that. I'm going to post that on my Twitter. Nice. Um, because I'm going to do a lot more of that as we as these games come forward, um, especially since now after editing these podcasts, I'm a premier expert. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to be. <laughs> I'll probably just start cranking out gifts and, uh, nice. and showing some cool stuff out these games, teasing them. All the games look great. Really yeah. excited if you guys get your hands on on them, and we'll be talking more about them in the in the coming weeks and even months. I really, yeah, I really want to mention one thing on asteroids, which is super super dope is uh, I think Asteroids has like the best sound effects out of everything I heard. There's this pickup uh, where uh, you get like a shield from uh, enemy bullets where they shoot you. And basically the bullets bounce off the shield and go back to the direction towards the enemies. And the bounce sound is so satisfying. I want to have it like my alarm clock in the morning. So it's like, <laughs> bow, bow, bow. Boom. or, Boom. or yeah. the large UFOs flying. It's so dope. It's just like one uh, large, like a Medusa or something like whoop, mm-hmm. whoop, whoop. It's yeah. so good. I really need to give a shout out to Egidius Chilchus, who's been working with us uh, for quite a while, actually on, all of the sound sound effects of the game. So he's super dope to work with and uh, very, very talented. Do you want to say his name one more time? Uh, that's Egidius Chilchus. Cool. So you guys can all uh, find him on social good, media. Yeah. Don't spell it. Don't spell it out for him. They got to figure good it out. Good luck finding it. <laughs> cool. Uh, well, with that, we'll, uh, we're going to take a quick break to hear from our, to hear from our sponsors. And, uh, and on the other side... We'll talk. We'll actually talk about producing, producing the game, what goes into it, and all that stuff. So uh, we'll see you on the other side of this commercial break. Discover a world beyond your wildest dreams. Discover Atari. Pioneers in coin video games like Centipede, Tempest, and Asteroids that challenge you, excite you. Test you like never before. Discover the Atari that opened your eyes to the world's most popular home video games like Space Invaders, Missile Command, and Warlords. Discover the Atari that brought you a home computer truly designed for the home. Sophisticated for advanced needs, yet simple enough for your child to use. Compose music. Play advanced games. Manage your finances, all at the touch of a button. Discover Atari. Atari! And discover how far you can go. All right. Well, it looks like our uh, sponsors kind of pumped the brakes a bit following those uh, the aggressive string for the last couple of weeks, which is good. You know, we could, I think everybody's a lot chiller now. We're cool. We're on the other side of the release. Everything's nice. This is great. This is great. All right. So, so hopefully now that we're all relaxed, let's talk about, let's get into the weeds here. Let's talk about, let's talk about the production of the Recharge series, right? So I'm a producer at Atari. Tadas is a producer at Sneaky Box. I am. Tadas, what, what would you say goes into, like, how, how would you describe what you do to people? Because I find it really difficult to describe what I do to people. Yeah. Um, I do too. What I say usually is just putting out fires as soon as they come up. Not always uh, f- fast enough to put them out as they are starting to burn. But yeah, um, yeah. Basically, my uh, my role here at Sneaky Box is uh, 
a producer. I'm I manage a team of people, uh, a very talented group of people uh, with engineers, artists, musicians, uh, even font makers at one point. So um, yeah, basically uh, my job is basically just filling in Excel sheets of uh, people what needs to what's still missing and still what needs to be done. Um, trying to uh, follow like an agile principle uh, of development. So where we uh, plan ahead, uh, what we need to do uh, and then just uh, see what uh, has been completed, what else needs to be done. Um, truth be told, that's not always uh, the easiest way uh, if, if there's like chaos and there's always chaos. Uh, but yeah, yeah uh, basically just uh, just looking at all of the moving parts, uh, seeing how they fit all of the pieces together and uh, checking when everything comes comes together, basically just preparing everything for for uh, for it to go out. How, how do you like this as a description where as a producer, you are basically the friction point where what wants to be done? Yeah butts up against what can be done. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and, there, uh, yeah. and there are a lot of things like that. So uh, there are a lot of uh, ideas that were floating around and, and there's just, uh, you need to somehow fit uh, the time frame that uh, you want to yeah. meet somehow. And, and truth be told, there's always something to improve, always something to uh, make better. But at the end of the day, uh, only the best games are always released. So uh, I guess there's uh, there comes a time where you need to like draw the line on the sand and say we did what we could to the best of our abilities, and this needs to go out. Um, and I think we did that to like a great extent. I think the reception was uh, amazing. Uh, the team is happy with uh, what they've achieved. Uh, we had a, like a little celebration uh, on the release date where we had donuts. I saw and, the donuts. Yeah. Those donuts and, look good. Yeah, yeah, indeed. There are some good donut places here in Lithuania. And yeah, as, as like the rock stars, we feel we got like the centipede uh, poster and all right. of us signed it. And that's the first poster that's going to go up on uh our walls in our new office so that's so cool that's amazing super excited about that and uh hopefully you guys uh will be able to visit us here and sign the posters yourselves at some point in the future hopefully <laughs> yeah uh, my autograph uh costs money just so you know <laughs> uh i got you man mine is, get you mine the is... Two cents. <laughs> i got you the two cents mine is actually the opposite i have to pay <laughs> to give people my autograph it's very Perfect. it's an it's an interesting transaction yeah but, you know it, it's just how it goes but really like if if you're listening and you haven't seen the art for the game maria the artist oh, on yeah. on it is just a force yeah she is absolutely incredible she did the art for missile command recharge last year and when we were doing the whole planning for the process that was absolutely part of the package it's like this had to be a part of it she had to do all the key art, and we got two pieces for every uh, for every game, and they all look absolutely incredible. The black the Black Widow key art is so amazingly terrifying; it's perfect. And the yeah. breakout art, honestly, my favorite of them. They're all awesome, but the breakout key art with the guy with the side profile view of the guy breaking out of prison, the the color scheme, and all that is so cool. It's so cool, and she kind of did the impossible when creating something for a concept that's so abstract like giving yeah. up breaking bricks and like what's the key art going to be i'm like well there's kind of key art all over the map back in the day with things like the um with with people breaking out of jail which is most of it it's things that kind of look like they're out of the um the mad t the mad comics and then you had these uh, like spy versus spy you know what i mean like that kind of art style and then you had a box art which was like two astronauts in space You're like oh, well it could be literally anything and yeah. she she absolutely crushed it. It's it's incredible. Um, yeah, but thanks for that thanks for that explanation. Um, yeah, on the on the on the publishing side, it's a similar deal. You you 
ba- you would get more granular, right? Managing everybody mm-hmm. from a task to task. So you kind of live, you say you live in spreadsheets, but you also live in these kind of task management boards yeah, exactly. in a way. And, you know, I'm kind of in the same boat, but also from the publishing side of things from a high level. So it's not only looking at the game production itself, but also keep an eye on marketing and any other, um, and like submission tasks, um, yeah. for all these consoles that it was an education for this yeah, game. This is, trip. uh, this is my first release on, uh, on PlayStation and Xbox and really jumping into those systems was, uh, was a hell of a learning experience. And we're not going to say anything nasty about anybody because <laughs> they're really nice people all, all across the board. Um, and yeah, they, but they're all different. They all have their yeah. different quirks and you have to do that. So we, with all those platforms, you're doing it, uh, times four. So at the end of the day, you're managing like 20 different submissions and it's crazy, but Adam's been a great help with that as well, with his, uh, with his experience on PC and switch. I think thanks to him, we were able to really, uh, really nail our switch submissions and, and Epic, I think, right. And, and Epic game store as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Wait, yeah, it's, so uh, are you saying I'm the expert on something? I'm sorry. Yeah. Hang on. Let me restate that. I'm the expert among us. On among something? us. <laughs> no. I said that it was after Missile Command, after Missile Command launched, and we uh, and Adam was learning <laughs> Epic for the first time, and and VCS as well. I was like, cool. Mm-hmm. Now you're an expert. Now you're a pro. Now you got yeah. it all locked down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, Todd is the guy like who works who works miracles and, um, and really does a great Mm -hmm. job. And I said it before, and I just need to reemphasize that, which is anything that is done is thanks to Tatis. I can't take all the credit. It is, it is, it is rank. It is wrangling cats. You know, you'll, you'll go, you'll take the credit. It really is. (laughs) It really is. And the thing that you'll find on it or not, you take it. (laughs) Yeah. And the thing that you'll find is like, as a, you know, when I mentioned about that friction point between what wants to be done and what can be done, yeah, that is a really important question because that's often what is how delays happen yeah, and yeah. undue stress. And when you're in an industry where it's built around creativity, everybody has an idea. Everybody yeah. has a way to make it better. And in most cases, they're right. Yeah. In most cases, there's good ideas coming from all over the place. But at some point, you got to make the decision because you got to you got to eventually come out. So for the amount of stuff that we got in the game, in the amount of time we got it done, there is a list that's at least twice as long of all the things that you wanted to get into the game that just couldn't yeah. be done. Um, but, you know, you always look to improve. You always look to get better. And uh, I'm really happy with what we got. So uh, that's, that's how we got there. Tadas, where, before Sneaky Box, how did, you, how did you get to where you are? Can you give a little bit of insight into your, um, into your background? Sure. Uh, do you want me to go like Vitas did? Backwards or forwards? Um, were you in the circus? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was not in the circus. Then, then you could go forward. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess I'll just uh, tell a little story from like the childhood uh, after like elementary school when we started like uh, middle school. Our first like great teacher. Uh, asked us all to write like what we want to do in the future like you know the, the, the classic things but then she put it in an envelope and uh, just uh, left it in her desk for like 12 years after we finished oh, wow. our uh, studies and went to colleges or universities which i was yeah which i was a part yeah. uh, t- like studying tourism and hotel management at that time mm. um yeah, I finished that and I decided like, I don't know if tourism is for me, actually. And I really want to go get into games because like my thesis work was about uh, like gaming culture and, and events in, in, in gaming. So I went back to my teacher, uh, just basically just to have a coffee and chat. Uh, and, and she pulled out uh, like the letter, said, do you want to open it now? Like, see what's in it. Like, yeah, sure. And then I read that I want to make games. And then I was like, oh my God, I completely forgot that I actually want that to make so games. Wild. And and like this whole time, games were fo- like part of my uh, life and I wanted to work with that. And, and then I decided to start like studying, like get at least an understanding what is programming and development in general. Yeah. 
So I started with like basic uh, web development stuff. stuff. Uh, after that, I uh, tried to find like my footing in, in the development industry, but couldn't actually. And uh, I was actually able to land like a, a gig of a quality assurance uh, guy in, in uh, like uh, a great studio in Lithuania, uh, Tuto Tunes. Uh, they make uh, games for kids, which are super dope. I really recommend to check it out. For any, What's anybody, the name of them again? Tuto Tunes. Uh, okay. They yeah, they make dope games for everybody who's under like under ten. <laughs> yeah, and and I worked with them for a couple of years. That was uh, really like a good understanding how the industry works, especially as a quality assurance uh, guy. Basically, you under, you yeah. uh, talk with the artists, you talk with the developers, you get into inside of the engine, and then you get inside of the publishing side, and basically you get to touch all of the moving parts. And uh, after a couple of years, I uh, decided to help out Sneakybox. Um, they were originally looking for a, like a sales manager. Uh, but apparently they had like more need for a producer, which I, I guess I fit the role while I'm still, because I'm still here. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. So That's generally a good sign. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I've been working with them for a couple of years as a producer, uh, a wannabe, uh, game designer and like, a, a supporting quality assurance specialist, uh, especially when our. QA guy uh, had to take an absence leave, so I had to step in oh and learn, learn all the consoles. Oh my god, I have like I've been playing games for a long time, but I never had a console, and now I I need to work with all of them. I didn't know how yeah. to hold like a controller or like move stuff, and now uh, I had to become a pro very fast. So you're an expert. Yeah, I'm just so imagining that... you holding a <laughs> controller upside down. Yeah, yeah, yeah like... exactly. No, that's not how you do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you using it like people do in the movies where they just like pretend to use it all awkwardly? No, I was actually... And it's a whole body exercise? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The whole body was definitely a thing. Whoa, and whoa. Especially like the thumbs. Oh my God, how do you move the thumbs? Especially like the QA guy. And I think you mentioned on the last podcast where he he has been speeding, uh, speed running of a very specific challenge in Cinepede. Yeah, yeah. For, the trap challenge. Yeah, for to get like the high, the fastest uh, clear of that challenge, and he does it on the controller. I could, I could not understand how he does that, especially <laughs> that fast. I, I always do it on mouse and keyboard, and it's, yeah. it seems impossible what he's doing. So, um, yeah, I had to learn a lot of stuff uh, to, 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 to. Uh, do the job I do. Yeah, that's cool. So would you give, if you were to give tips to anybody who wanted to be in your role as yeah. a producer of a, a development team, where, uh, what, what would you give? Any, uh, any advice? Um, I guess, uh, yeah. Write it down uh, when you were in kindergarten. Write it down when you're in kindergarten. Yeah. Uh, Take, Hope the best. Uh, <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, like as I mentioned, I think starting in QA is a very good uh, a way into the industry because it really lets you uh, understand how things are done and 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 uh, what's important in a game, what is may well maybe not so important that you can uh, survive without. Uh, and as a QA guy, you always want to have like everything, but you can't. So that's a, a good uh, learning and curve and just being very organized, uh, everything in folders, everything named, no version, final version, point three, final, final for sure, V2. I feel like this is a personal shot at me, but <laughs> that's fine. Uh, yeah. that's, um, that's a huge point is that organization aspect. Yeah, right? exactly. And exactly. I think one of the most helpful things is being able to, if anybody asks for anything, you can immediately find it. Yeah, and, exactly. And like your, because the other thing that you need to do in the, in the producer role is to remove all obstructions. Yeah, exactly. And, and ideally before they happen. So to make sure everybody has what they need when they need it and then make sure and, uh, and to keep things moving smoothly, because when you're working on things like tight schedules, then, you know, 
hours quickly turn into days, which turn into weeks, which turn into months. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's a big part of it. So cool. I think exactly. personally, you guys are both excellent at doing basically everything you just described. And this is why your role just works perfectly. Uh, and these things go smoother than they potentially should have given some of the roadblocks. <laughs> I mean, well, there's a lot you don't know, though. Yeah. <laughs> that goes on under the hood. And I, and I know there's a lot that I don't know as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so, yeah, well, thanks. Thanks for all that. Um, I also I also do want to give you a shout out because really, Tadis, you, you did a great work. You did a great job at producing the games and continue to. We're still we're still in some ways in active development, not in of some course. ways, in all ways in active development. Yeah, actually, um, yeah. And, but really what I want to thank you most for is, uh, give me a ride to the, uh, Vilnius the airport, airport in, yeah. in September of 2019, because yeah. that was when I first met Tadas. <laughs> uh, didn't know him. I was visiting the sneaky box studio he was in their Lithuania driver then. and I, uh, and Ludus, who's the CEO, he'll be on the podcast shortly. If not next week, then the following week, we're, we're figuring yeah. that out. And, oh, he's, he's a lot of fun and he's got a great beard. And <laughs> yeah, he, the best, but he basically like, oh, I got, I got you a ride to the airport, and it was Tadas. And the first time we, when we kicked off, uh, when we kicked off the recharge games, and I said, oh, Tadas, it, it's nice to meet you. And you're like, actually, I gave you a ride to the airport when you were here. I was like, <laughs> yeah. oh, of course, <laughs> of course. Wow. Do, do you remember what we talked about at typical all? Typical American. Because I, don't oh yeah, I remember, either. I remember everything. I remember everything. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I, I asked you, it was a lot. We talked a bit about politics. Yeah. Um, it was a bit about um, education in Lithuania. Yeah. We talked about that. We talked a little bit about World War II. And you were really open. <laughs> really? It was awesome. We did? Yeah, man. Yeah, we did. Oh, my I God. I asked some questions. Yeah. Oh, my God. Gee, and it was, how long uh, was this uh, airport ride? I mean, it's like an, like hour. an hour. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, two strangers getting to know each other, you know, <laughs> yeah. just bonding. In a in a mini road trip across uh, across Lithuania, yep, it's very good. So so thanks for that. Uh, okay, so let's let's move on. We got some questions. Uh, I think we could bang through these pretty quickly. Um, so here we go from the YouTube comments. And again, ask questions if you listen to this. You want to know anything? Now we can talk about all the games. So everything's on the table to the extent we can ask about them. So starting yeah. off with Sabretooth Retro from YouTube. He says, the podcast is really hitting, hitting its stride. I'm really looking forward to Centipede next week. Also, any chance a recharge soundtrack on vinyl? Um, well, thank you for the kind words. We appreciate it. And uh, as far as the uh, recharge soundtrack on vinyl, uh, well, that's not really in our control. But I have passed on the, the feedback to Megan. So she told me it's a lot of work. It's very expensive. So if you buy the game a lot, then we can, uh, we can look into that. So there you go. <laughs> Tell all your friends. Get the game, get the soundtrack, and look. I would love, a, I would love a vinyl. Of Me the too. You know, one thing I uh, love in in Japan every time I went is you always go into these bars and they and they play records and when oh, yeah. they and they have those record holders that they always display the record that they're playing at the time. Oh, and I was just nice. like, man, just just imagining that vinyl art on a. You want to be artist, that guy? The national. That I wanna, has that yeah. record holder. I want to be that guy just for the one. I don't own any vinyl, but I would buy mm -hmm. that vinyl just to display it in some very prominent place. And um, in, I think that was a personal attack to me because I am the vinyl guy. I guess. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think two weeks back, I went to like a, a, a bazaar. Like, I don't know what you call it, actually. Like a market, basically, where yeah. everyone's selling their old stuff. And flea I, market, I think they call yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, basically. And, and like, I found a tent with like... Uh, the records of old rock bands yeah. that were like all of them were, were original and oh my god i like melted right there and then there and then yeah it kind of reminded me about like the fact that we have these achievements which are actually oh, yeah. uh names of very famous rock bands songs so yeah i guess sh shout out a note if you recognize all of the songs so there you go um okay so next comment was also from youtube from enzonda all caps i'm not going to yell it don't know if i'm supposed to 
I have two questions. What is the exclusive content of the VCS version supposed to be? And two, will all games from Atari have something unique on that platform? Greetings from Argentina. Look at that. We got a listener in Argentina. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, Yeah, I I could disclose that right now. So the VCS version has 10. Each version of the game has 10 unique challenges on the VCS. So you get a bunch more challenges uh, on the VCS. Those are exclusive for you guys. So you can enjoy that. Um, Other things that are exclusive um, is really just the um, is the joystick control. So that that support is for is for the titles as well. Um, Yeah. So you'll you'll find those that answers that question. So into your question, that is going to be the same for all the titles. And as the the last one, it's not so much a question; it's a request. And uh, I think I think this is also now. So so basically, I'll just go into it reading it. Matthew Nunn, Noon. I think um, I might have read something from you uh, in a previous episode as well. Would it be possible for you guys joining the official Atari VCS Discord? It would be awesome to have you in on the chat as well. Now, before you answer, before you answer, Atari themselves responded, or ourselves. Pretty sure it was David, uh, who's our who's our head of marketing. He yeah. said he responded, Matt, why don't we hold a QA session in the Discord? The team is Ooh. busy on the remaining titles, but we can make some make time for a session, I would think. Well, we probably can. So that might yes. happen in the near future. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> and there you go. Um, and now to to end the podcast, as always, talk a little bit about what we're playing. I got a really weird one today. Um, Ooh. so got us, uh, Adam. Want to? Oh, me? Oh, you want Tadas to go first? Yeah, I'd love to know what Tadas has looked at. Oh man, Tadas, what are you playing? I'm not playing much. I'm just working a lot. <laughs> no, actually, so uh, as as I'm, an, with, you. I'm uh, with you. Yeah, yeah. Like as an Eastern European, you really need to get into these uh, like Eastern European type games. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Escape from Tarkov for the last, I don't know, two years, which is oh, yeah. friggin' great. And I hated I hate that game as well. Uh, that's a love-hate relationship with that game. But I've decided after, after some time uh, that I really want to get into the game that actually I think inspired that, so Stalker. And yeah. I recently started playing Stalker, which is like crazy how 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 can somebody make that level of quality in those years like and and yeah. i can't even uh, yeah uh, a lot of the games that we've been looking into like the classics of atari is also like how did they make that back in the yeah. day wow no way so yeah i'm really enjoying stalker right now uh didn't get into that a lot maybe like four hours deep at the moment so hoping to have like a free weekend to to play that through the end if that's possible i don't know how long the game is incredibly punishing yeah yeah stalker's one of those games that i played as a kid thinking oh this is this is gonna be great this is gonna be cool i'm gonna lose myself in it and i never had any idea what i was supposed to be doing and so that that's something that i'll probably i'll definitely jump into stalker too when it comes out i love the uh you know, you talk about Eastern European games. I love the Metro series. Yeah. Uh, oh my God. Those, the ex- those are awesome. So can I just, I would, yeah, go ahead. Oh my God. Metro Exodus had one of the most heartfelt moments in like all the games I've Don't played. Don't spoil it. I, I need to get back into it. Don't spoil it. Cause we're recommending things. Oh, we're not spoiling man. things. Okay. And okay. also for my, for myself, but yeah. the game is excellent. I need to get back to it because it unfortunately it had a few crashing issues when I first started playing it, but it doesn't. Who I'm gonna it? jump into, <laughs> yeah. But unfortunately, I'm gonna. So I, I need to jump into that soon. Now that I have a kind of a beefy PC, there should be no excuses now. No excuses. Uh, so Adam, what about you? Uh, well, I actually there's two things I've played in the last week. I played uh, through this Kina Bridge of Spirits, which Looks is great. a just incredible action adventure game that is just potentially one of the most stunning games in existence uh, made by a former animation company. Um, Mm. And it's like, you just look at this thing. It's like a moving Pixar movie. And it was just, it's, it's not doing anything like reinventing the wheel or anything. It's just a fun, interesting uh, action kind of Zelda ish game. 
uh, and it was a lot of fun. But now I'm sucked into New World. Uh, right. By some scrappy upstart. Uh, uh, what are they? Amazon, I think, yeah, I made think so. it. Um, have you guys heard, heard of them? them? I think so, yeah. They, and it's it's an MMO. It has all the things of MMOs, but it looks like you just buy it. You don't have to subscribe. And the key that's kind of got me sucked in is it's very dense uh, and looks really nice. But also the combat isn't just like you click on a thing and keep clicking a button. It's straight up action combat. Like you're rolling and dodging. And uh, like if you want to shoot fireballs, you have to aim them and such. It's it's very cool. Very cool. And like I said, look, fi- uh, if you a lot of people are talking about the long queue times in that game to get into <laughs> a server. And look, if you need a way to kill some of that time in the queues, yep. send a feed recharged. Yep. Perfect way to kill a couple minutes while you're uh, while you're suggestion. waiting in line. A great yeah, yeah. suggestion. Exactly. Get it on your switch. You pick it up there. You just play a couple rounds. Then when it's ready, boom, you're done. Yep. You know, pretty good. As for me, I've been playing a game on Switch called Metallic Child, and what? this is yeah. So this is um, I think it kind of positions itself as a roguelike game. It it has roguelike elements, but it's kind of like a mashup between a like a roguelike dungeon crawler beat em up and Mega Man. And oh, okay. uh, quite a bit more anime influence than I was expecting. Um, but really fun. Uh, really fun. The the reason why it's not really roguelike you have, and why it's Mega Man like is you have eight robot bosses that you have to find and and take down. And that's general premise. And it's but called each, Metallic Child. Yeah. Each one of these, each one of these um, dungeon runs is a lot longer than most roguelike games and oh, really? yeah so they could be like up to an hour to actually get oh, to the geez. end and then you lose and then you have to try it again i have two of eight defeated and it's fun it's really simple to pick up and play but this is also one of those cases of a game where i'm enjoying playing it i think i'm okay at it and i don't understand about half of the systems that are actually in it and why things happen the way they do but overall, a lot of fun, good time, great art, runs great on Switch. And uh, yeah, I, I could recommend it as a, as a fun little diversion. Um, Very nice. Yeah. So with that, we have come to the end. Tadas, thank you again yes. for joining us and for all your work. And most importantly, for that ride to the airport two years ago. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Hope Adam, we can repeat that. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and yeah, maybe you can maybe you give me right both ways. Yeah, who knows? Of course. Anything's possible. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Anything's um, possible. Think of the <laughs> possibilities. There's so many. Back and forth. Wow, wow. that's <laughs> wonderful. I can't wait. Can't wait. Uh, Adam, thanks again uh, for joining. As always, you always. are you are you are required to be here, and you don't have yes. a choice. <laughs> I don't leave this desk. To be honest, you can follow, you can follow him at. At the Adam Vision, you can follow me at Jays of Doom on Twitter. If you haven't done so yet, really check out Centipede Recharge, now available on every console, every modern console, that is. Those are Atari VCS, PC via Epic and Steam, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and S, PS4, and PS5. (laughs) Wow. You're getting good at that. And coming soon to the Nokia N-Gage. Love it. Love the engage V2. <laughs> um, never had one. That's a lie. Uh, got a fun story about engage, which I'll say it on another podcast. I'll tell you what, if you've gotten this far and you want to hear the really obscure engage story I have, put it in the YouTube comment and I'll tell the story on the next podcast. Okay. Because we're already running very long and it's super late for Tadas <laughs> and I feel really bad. About that. Um, it's the usual. Right. Okay, cool. And <laughs> Yeah, and also the other titles. So Black Widow, you're going to start seeing some pages pop up. You could already wish list it now on Steam, uh, but you're going to see the pages popping up for pre-order in the coming weeks. So keep an eye on those. Watch the trailer if you haven't done that yet, and we'll be teasing a lot more uh, information about those games in the coming weeks and months. So until next week, Adam, say goodbye to the people. Bye.